What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and this is what will probably be the final episode of Let's Play Pokemon Card. So, let's head into the back room here and inherit the giant, mystical, glowing, legendary cards, which are apparently as big as I am. Legendary Moltres! And you can actually come through and defeat these uh, Grandmasters again as many times as you want to get as many sets of these cards if you want. So if you want to, it's actually not that hard to acquire four of each of these. Um, it's pretty time consuming, but it's not very hard. If you can beat them once, you can beat them as many times as you want. So let's look at this uh, Zapdos, because I think it's a pretty interesting card. So when you put Zapdos in play, do 30 damage to a Pokemon other than Zapdos chosen at random. So that could be your opponent's, or your that could be your own. Uh, and its uh, attack, Big Thunder, is basically the same thing, but does 70 damage. Uh, and that's about it. The interested Now, you would think that this might not be the best card, because 70 damage... I mean, that's a lot, but it has a chance of dealing that damage to yourself? However, the interesting thing is that uh, both Peel of Thunder and Big Thunder, uh, neither of them will actually hit... It won't hit Zapdos, but it won't hit, like, any Zapdos. So if you have a, a Zapdos on your bench, it won't hit that Zapdos. It won't even be checked. Now I'm not sure if it specifically uh, checks for level 68 Zapdos, or if it will look for any Zapdos to skip. But uh, it's an interesting quirk, and it makes this card a lot better. So if you were to have uh, one, one of these Zapdos and like two of them on your bench or something like that, then you're guaranteed that you're going to hit the opponent. And hitting the possibility of hitting a ben opponent's bench Pokemon for 70 damage is actually pretty impressive. But anyways, on to the legendary Dragonite, which we never got to saw. Yes, we never got to saw. We never got to see. I can't honestly recall what it even does. Well, that's interesting. So it's like a mega super potion to everyone, and Slam is just kind of meh. But, like, it's an evolutionary card. If this was a basic Pokemon, it'd be really good. Why is it a level 41 Dragonite? That's not even possible. Dratini evolved at level 50. Oh, whatever. Really? Too bad I ended up using the same deck for almost the entire game. So, the credits... Oh, it's, it's, it's time for the credits to roll. So, this game. Honestly, like, I really like this game. I think it's a really good game. And it's a little bit of a shame that, I, that uh, people don't really... A lot of people don't seem to know that it's out there. I'm really glad that I did it, though. I've gotten a bunch of messages from people saying, you know... They used to play the Pokemon card game when they were kids, or they even they didn't play it, they just collected the cards, and it's cool to see someone playing the game the way it's supposed to be played, rather than just collecting them. Because, in truth, it's actually a pretty good game. I mean, it suffers from all the same problems that every other card game out there does, where some cards are just a lot better than others, and if you don't get those cards, then... What are you going to do? I mean, luck comes into play for a lot of it, and that's probably one of my least favorite parts of the game, is there's a lot of things that come with uh, uh, coin flips, and I would personally prefer a game that is less coin flippy and more skill-based. And I mean, there are ways you can get around that. I mean, I used a lot of Pokemon that do like paralysis and things like Pokeballs, uh, which use a coin flip, whereas I could have used more computer searches, which uh, work around discards, and but are guaranteed. But that's just kind of neither here nor there. It's just, it's just a fun game, and I mean, it's definitely got its quirks, but it's, it's fun. And I really like how this game takes the whole setup of a fairly standard Pokemon game approach, where you have to travel around, beat other trainers, defeat the, the gym slash club leaders and kind of power up your team to take on the ultimate challenge. They, I, I really like how they took that formula and applied it to the card game. And I don't... 
Honestly, I can't think of any other card video game that has done that before. I mean, I'm sure they're out there. I don't really, like, I'm not all up on the card video games, but it seems like so many card card games, like the video game rendition is always, you know, just face off against other human opponents or face off random AIs and stuff like that. They don't really have the whole appeal of, like, exploring different areas and facing all these uh, interesting AIs who have actual, like, personalities and stuff. And while a lot of them do have the kind of deck building thing where you have to, uh, you know, earn booster packs or cards or whatever, I just feel like the, the way that this game turns the whole process of fighting your way through your opponents into a real adventure, that's more like your average video game, it really appeals to me. And I wish more games did that. But then, at the same time, there isn't really many other card games that I really know well enough to really appreciate it. So, all in all, I mean, I just think the, uh, the Pokemon card game, the physical game, is fun, but this one's, I think, more fun. In a way, I guess. Like, I wish there were some harder trainers out there, because a lot of them just really aren't that good. But at the same time, it's a really nice way to kind of build as good a deck as you want without having to worry about buying the cards and buying booster packs. You just have to beat stuff, beat guys, get cards, build as good a deck as you want. And then if you want a real challenge, then you face off against your friends. Um, which, I guess is probably kind of hard to do these days, but... There's a bunch of stuff you can do with your friends in this game, honestly. There's this card pop feature where if you have a friend who uh, has Pokemon cards, you can card pop, and each of you will uh, get a random card. I think it's random anyways, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, and then also in each of the clubs, much like the other Pokemon games uh, in the Pokemon Center, the clubs in the side room have these ladies who you can, uh, uh, like, interact with your friends with. You can duel them, you can trade cards and all that jazz. Do I have any mail? I do have mail. I don't know why they would separate the mail up per, for each uh, trainer in the league, in the Grand Masters or whatever. Because, like, you fight them all in a row. I would think it would be much better to just receive all of these as soon as you get the 8th Master Medal. But then, it's not like I really need any more cards at this point anyways. And actually, um, it just occurred to me, uh, because... I, I mention this because uh, it was a deck that I always really liked to use against my friends. Uh, speaking of dueling your friends, I, I was mentioning earlier about uh, strategies that you can do with the uh, little 68 Zapdos. One strategy that I liked to use was uh, Zapdos as well as Mr. Mimes. You may recall I mentioned Mr. Mimes earlier. Uh, they use invisible, they have the Pokemon power, invisible wall, where any damage that's 30 or more is nullified against them. So that includes uh, Peel of Thunder and Big Thunder. So they can still be hit by Zapdos as random attacks, but they can't. They won't actually take any damage from it. So they're they're a pretty decent uh, combination. It, it is a very hit or miss deck, but it's always very fun, just because it's so annoying. Mr. Mime is a really annoying Pokemon to go against in general, because it's kind of uh, contrary to the goal of most decks. Usually you go for the Pokemon who can do as much damage as, you, as they can, basically. Whereas Mr. Mime really kind of preys on that. Bonus points if both you and your friend are using this Zapdos Mr. Mime deck. So anyways, things that are left to do in this game. I'm not going to do any of them, but if you see the, here it says uh, Album 210 uh, 226 Pokemon. So there, there are a lot of bonus cards you can get uh, from training with people in the clubs. I got some of them. Uh, mostly I just don't care though. I think you can do a whole bunch of trading with Ishihara here uh, at certain points. And there's also this place, the Challenge Hall, where periodically if you come here there's a special challenge going on. Oh, well there's one going on right now, but uh, if you win the Challenge Cup you get a promotional Pokemon card, much like, oh, I don't know. Uh, what was a promotional card that I got? I got a, I got the Surfing Pikachu, for example. Um, stuff like that. Uh, cards that aren't really uh, 
accessible in other ways. The thing is that the challenge cups, I, I honestly have no idea when they're held and how it's determined. It just seems really random. And truth be told, I just don't really care. I, I don't care to collect all the cards. It's not something I care about. I just want to beat the opponents, and I did that. I don't really... I, now that I've done that, I don't really care to make my deck any stronger, and most of the promotional cards aren't really that good anyways. They're more just strange, and some of them can have str definite strengths, but... Yeah. So, uh, that's going to be it for this series. I'm, I'm all done with this. Uh, I'm going to be moving on to the next game. I might end up taking a little bit of break in between. Um, I'm pretty sure that... At the time when this episode goes up, uh, it will be in the middle, not the middle, but like towards the end of the March break, which if you aren't familiar, is a, uh, not, not a holiday, but oh, it's a week that us Canadians get off. Sometimes. Some of us don't. Uh, a lot of workplaces don't, but schools and stuff usually do. And I am, I, I have the next week off, or the March break off anyways. So, uh, I will not be posting any new episodes during the March break. I'm recording this before the March break starts, but I will not be posting uh, new episodes until the Monday afterwards. So, if we were to look at the calendar, that would be the 18th of March is when episodes will resume. So, uh, I can't think off the top of my head when this particular episode goes up, but between whatever date it is and the 18th, there will be no new episodes. After that, I will resume posting the next LP, which I will be, well, I'll be announcing shortly, but by the time this episode goes up, I will have already announced it. Hopefully the, the, that didn't confuse you too much. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's the end of Let's Play Pokemon Card. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm, it seems like a lot of people did. I certainly enjoyed doing it. I always enjoy playing this game. So, with that, I will not be doing any more delays because I've already extended the end of this episode out like 5,000 minutes longer than I expected. So, I will catch you later.